Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to You Heard Again. Just gonna give it another minute before we get it started. Let uh, everyone join in. Right. Thanks, guys. Welcome. Good evening. Um, I'm just going to let everyone say hi again. Wally, it's coming home, isn't it? I think it's definitely coming home for once. I'm optimistic. Hey, guys. Happy Friday. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining. Happy Friday. Yeah, Team England, right? I'm on Team England. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everyone. It's Bobby. It's good to be back on your herd. Um, yeah, nice to see you all. All right. Well, I'm not on Team England. Sorry, guys. I'm going to be your enemy for now, but uh, I think Italy's going to win. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, let's proceed. Uh, so this week's, you heard, is uh, about the Era 2 and Canonical Vault update. I'm sure you've all seen the announcement. Um, just to recap, we're pushing the new Canonical Vaults launch a couple weeks back to allow more time for the finishing touches, for testing, and to get the audit signed off. Um, now, in the meantime, there's still plenty of things to look forward to, and we're going to discuss some of those, and we're going to discuss uh, what we as a community can do to help ensure that ERA2 ends up successful. We'll be brief in the discussion so that we can dive into the questions more, because those are more important at this, this point in time. But uh, as for the discussion, let's kick it off with a recent topic I made on the forum. Uh, I made a thread on the on the discourse forum about the ERA2 emissions, and I'll... Uh, I'll share a link in the Your channel so that you can read up on it while I, while I discuss it. Just to summarize my points, well, first of all, what is it about? Uh, in ERA2, we're going to uh, have to establish a new emission schedule for the vaults, for the stakers, and for liquidity providers. And we haven't, as a team, decided what kind of approach we'll be taking. So I thought it would be a good idea for me to give my personal opinions about the subject and, of course, to open up the conversation so the community can chip in and and maybe look for some uh, issues with my my proposal or propose something of their own. Um, but to summarize it, I believe that uh, with the vaults coming up, uh, we should uh, reduce emissions somewhat at the start, at initially. Why? Because we're going to be launching conservatively. We're going to be launching with a limited set of strategies. And we don't want the same thing to happen that happened to us last era. We don't want uh, TVL to come piling in for that really high APY, but then to leave immediately as soon as the APY starts dropping down. Uh, we're looking for more sticky capital, obviously. We want people to stick around. We want people who believe in the vision of the project. And uh, one way to do that is by ramping up the emissions slowly over time. So we can start with a low amount of emissions to slowly build up uh, the vault, to make sure that it works fine, to make sure that there aren't any bugs. And then as we introduce more strategies, that's when we can start raising the APY. Now, if you're a long-term believer in the project, and if you want to keep your capital in the vaults for a longer time, then seeing the APY go up over time is actually encouraging. It makes you want to stay in for even longer. So that's one approach that I'm taking. Uh, that, that, that's one reason why I think that approach is better. But I also believe that um, this market, as it stands, is a bit uncertain, and in general, people are more eager to uh, to sell their crypto as soon as there is a little bit of a market correction again simply because the current conditions are so uncertain. And in that scenario, we don't want to be giving people lots of our free tokens because when we when we add emissions to vaults, we're actually paying for people to use the vaults, essentially. Uh, as for staking, uh, because staking uh, emissions were so high, most people were, were, were pleased to be staking and to growing their stack and building more voting power for later on. Um, but if we're going to reduce fault emissions, we can also reduce staking emissions, in my opinion. Why? Because uh, the only reason that staking APY has to be high is to keep people from dumping their token and to uh, encourage them to go, go into the staking pool for higher APY. Furthermore, there's going to be the 600k tokens from the Great Harvest. 
they're already coming into the gauges and these gauges add extra utility to the access token giving people even more reason to hold the token um, and finally the suggestion that i presented at the end was that buybacks can be adjusted and the reason why i believe buybacks should be adjusted is because again in uncertain market conditions uh, we don't want to be holding simply our own token the axis that means we're exposed only to one asset and if the asset goes down our treasury also takes a hit makes us really fragile what we can do instead is take the curve that we farm the crv tokens that we farm and um, stake them at convex and in, then by the by doing that we can uh, generate new cash flows in the form of tree crv which is actually just a dollar of course and then distribute them to the treasury and to stakers while also keeping the crv liquid so we can set it up later on to generate um, some capital if we need it uh, again uh, i shared the link in the channel so feel free to to look at it feel free to share your thoughts and make sure that uh, you also uh, study the tokenomics that we have you can do that in our um, on our resources on our docs oh, oh. what else can what we else can we... oh yeah bobby go ahead yeah, I was just going to say thanks for covering that. And uh, the post you put on the forum is really good for people to go and check out. Um, the reason I mean, we've obviously talked about it internally, the, the tokenomics and the different choices that we've got. Um, I guess um, just the, the current market price, like you said, and uh, maybe trading conditions of, of the general space just means that we may want to rethink what we were originally going to do and just open that up to the community to provide um, their thoughts or their feedback. Uh, rather than just piling, piling in a bunch of tokens, um, maybe we want to do it the other way around and try and have uh, a more organic growth rather than forcing it. Uh, you know, we've talked about doing like a two-week um, really high like emission thing just as, a, as an advertisement essentially to bring in TVL. Um, but we also don't want people just to dump tokens. And just like AE a mentioned there, um, people are tending to dump tokens now just because things are a bit unsettled. And I find myself doing that even on, on my own farming. Uh, I'm just dumping tokens to, to stables immediately um, just because of the potential for them to go down. So there's something that we want to think about a little bit more. Uh, so we would certainly appreciate anyone's um, input or contributions so we can make the best decision for all of us, essentially. Yeah, thanks for sharing your thoughts, Bobby. And again, it's, it's about all of us. So uh, sharing your thoughts is, is about making it better for you and making it better for everyone else holding the token. Now, that's one way you can cont contribute to the success of Eric too, but there are other ways. One of them, for example, is the current NFT design contest that's still running. Uh, the deadline is on Sunday. Uh, if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, go ahead and, and check the Medium post about it. Now, obviously, Sunday is, is a bit... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not that much time if, you, if you're just starting designing, but since we're, we're having to delay the canonical vaults, we can also delay the submission window, extend it a little bit, to allow artists more time for either, you know, upgrading their their current designs, we have already got some great submissions, or just to get new designs started. So we'll, we're looking to do that, and if we do, we'll announce it shortly so that uh, everyone is in the know about it. And the reason that this is another way you can contribute to the project is because uh, these NFTs are meant to promote the uh, canonical vaults. So this is another re incentive to be entering them. For example, uh, that's why we have the separate categories: link, BTC, ETH because they're meant for depositors to reward early depositors with some nice artwork quality stuff from the community and you know help bring eyes on the project so this, this is actually another way for you to help market the project and speaking of marketing people have been asking about uh, yeah how what can what can we do to promote the axis what can we do to uh, bring the word you know uh, spread the word around obviously the main thing you can do is just to mention it to your network um, to go into other projects that you're involved in to their discords and just mention why access is an upcoming uh, place to store your blue chip tokens your btc your eth your link and to get on twitter to to um, you know tag your influence influence that you that your favor that you that you favor and to mention why access to them no that's that's just uh, many ways you can get involved in in marketing without actually having to do much you know just to mention it and just to start discussions is enough usually uh, another w way you can can help out is just to check the bounty board, see if there's anything that suits you, and apply by sending an email to Wally. Um, yeah, that's that about that about covers it. So as I said, it was a brief session, and now we can move on to the predetermined questions. 
and uh, get get all your questions answered. And feel free to uh, to ask more questions in the meantime in the Uber channel, of course. So, first question by Timmy Toes: What's everyone's favorite cheese? And he says, "Mine used to be Red Leicester, but now it's Manchego." Now, I've never heard of either of those, but in my opinion, my uh, my favorite cheese is uh, Danish Blue, Dana Blue. I see the Tusk says uh, it was Merlot Bella Vitano. Again, never heard of it. Uh, Cold Summer says Gouda, just like our dev. And Crypto Force One says Gruyere. So I guess that I'm more familiar with those. And of Mr. Mr. or Wally or Bobby, do you have any favorite cheese that you want to talk about? Uh, just I love it. really good smelling brie cheese. That's, that's my thing. Nice. I, I, Wally, I'm not a cheese person, unfortunately. So. Yeah, stay away from it. <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Manchego. I'm a Manchego guy. Manchego and Quince. That's the way to go. Okay, so Manchego, that's got two votes, right? It must be good. Gotta yeah, check but it's got to go with the Quince. Got to go with the Quince, the little fruit thing. Ah, okay. Okay. Yep. Mm. Fancy stuff. All right. On to the next question. Zemus, our, our favorite questionnaire. Did you hear? Did you guys hear that there's an unfilled CME gap at 3,500? Zemus asks. <laughs> and then the big papi says... Uh, those are the biggest memes in crypto, and Cold Summer actually mentioned this to me in private. They are just a big meme, but I, I kind of disagree. I think uh, CME gaps are relevant, but only in a shorter time frame. And I think that 3K CME gap is a bit too old, so I'm just gonna say it's uh, not relevant anymore. I think uh, I think that's that's about it. And Big Papi had a had a bunch of questions, a bunch of great questions, and we'll dive into those uh, one by one. The first question he asked is, going to the next era, what can I do to help us transition? Can we get the meme machine up and running again with contests? So what you can do to help us transition, I think we, I mentioned a few things, you know, mention it to, to other discords that you're in and spread the word on Twitter and so on. Um, but as for meme uh, contests, I saw that Flint was also in support of it. And, you know, I think it's a great idea. We had a meme contest in the past. It was fun. And I think it's definitely something we can, uh, we can try doing after the Champions Table competitions are all finished. And um, he also asked uh, asked if we have any community managers, because he mentions that the link vaults are a big deal. Yeah, we do have deep ties with the link community. So transfer and call, uh, Tojo and myself, we're all uh, link OGs. We have uh, we have our own networks, and I, I think we are definitely on the radar of most link marines. I mean, most link guys that I know they have heard of Y axis, and even in the Discord that we're in, a lot of guys do hold uh, chain link. Um, as far as BTC and ETH goes, well, not as much so, but those are much larger markets for us to tap into as well. You know, much more yield opportunities. So I don't think there's a pressing need for a community manager in that regard. And then he asks, uh, have you considered a few AMAs or community yeah. events or a kickoff event uh, for the new V3? Maybe invite some folks from other projects. Yeah, good question again. Um, we've mentioned it a few times, we have a concentrated marketing ramp around V3. We have lots of marketing material sitting, standing by, you know, waiting to be used. And it does include something like this. So a little bit of a teaser, but we are, we are going to do something like uh, an AMA or a DeFi event with another project. Uh, just look forward to, to, to great things coming. Uh, if, you, if you think the marketing isn't really uh, our strongest point right now, well, yeah, of course, because we're waiting for the product launch. That's when we're going to use all those levers. And as we add strategies for V3, we can obviously think about doing uh, co-marketing with uh, another protocol that's that we're using to farm. So that's definitely something we can do in the future. And then he asks, uh, how can we keep our community engaged in, uh, and interested in case there's a potential bear cycle? Uh, and Papi mentions a couple of options like uh, setting up educational material about DeFi or about crypto, um, sharing lessons about trading or technical analysis and adding new channels to Discord. Uh, yeah, I definitely think it's always important to have something going on. That's what we've been doing. Uh, we've had our uh, button hunts, we have had quizzes, design contests, we have you heard that you're listening to right now, of course. Uh, but there's there's always more things that we can think of doing. Uh, we can mix it up over time. We can, you know, uh, try doing things with other projects, like I mentioned. But uh, yeah, all in due time. First, we're going to focus on the Champions Table uh, contest, and then after that, we'll see what's uh, what's next. Uh, as far one as thing channel, channel, oh yeah, Bobby. Sorry, yeah. sorry to jump in there. Um, yeah, one thing we were considering at the start of the era was um, having like um, uh, integrated um, DeFi games on on the platform and like a leaderboard. So they'll be like slightly educational and slightly fun as well. So you'd a bit like the the quizzes that we've been doing. So. 
uh, they're a way to kind of learn a bit more about DeFi as well as like, you know, use a bit of time on the platform as well, playing some games and competing against each other, uh, which might be a fun thing to kind of keep people engaged. So I'm not sure if that's something that you guys would like to see. And, and if it is, then please leave us a message and we'll um, push it forward. Yeah, definitely. So if that sounds interesting to you, uh, Fabio or anyone else, let us know. And, or maybe if you have other ideas, feel free to reach out to one of us and, and maybe we can get it going. But uh, yeah, as far as the Discord channels goes, uh, yeah, I don't think we need more. I think we have something for, for every topic and we don't want it to get too spread out. So there's the activity also gets dispersed. We want activity to be concentrated on only the few major channels so that uh, no one gets lost. And then last question, you said, uh, our Reddit presence is lacking. Can we volunteer to help manage? Uh, the answer is yes, of course. Uh, I think it's a good, uh, good idea actually. I mean, Reddit is a great place for crypto discussions. They have several great subreddits, some not so great subreddits like Crypto Moonshots, but let's not talk about that too much. If you want to get uh, started on Reddit for the Yaxis project, send a DM to Wally and let's get it going. Uh, thanks for your great questions again, Papi. Those were all great. And I see like, a lot of uh, thumbs up as well. For, for Reddit, yeah, it's interesting because, um, you know, the, the last cycle, it was the go-to place was, was on Reddit and everyone was there. And they were just not being so like welcoming or accommodating of the community. They were constantly banning threads and banning posters and um, stopping people uh, doing brigading and stuff like this, uh, you know, when they're trying to kind of promote their own coins and stuff. So everyone kind of moved to Twitter um, and Twitter is now like the go to place for stuff. So uh, that's kind of why we focus on Twitter rather than Reddit. Um, but yeah, for sure, Reddit is still alive and kicking and it's something that we should definitely look into. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, as you mentioned, Twitter is, is hugely important right now. If you are a major influencer and you mention a token that's smaller cap, then immediately you can just jump in price like we saw happening to, to buy access and, uh, and on the on the token swap. So uh, it's definitely more our focus right now. Uh, on to the next question. That's by Unrelent. And he asks, can you cl clarify whether we will get auto compounding in ERA2? Because resources state that rewards will start auto compounding, but uh, Bob Sakamano asked a question in general chat and the response had uh, Unrelent a little confused. Yeah, so Summer answered the question and I'll repeat his answer. Uh, yeah, we, we mentioned that it wasn't going to be feasible in uh, week tenure because we are uh, 14 curves gauge contracts and uh, those do not have auto compounding. Now, Obviously, we could make adjustments to that contract, but uh, we're trying to be conservative here. We're trying to minimize the the attack vectors and minimize the risk. So we're just going to stick with the uh, with the rewards contracts that do not auto compound. You'll have to claim your tokens as uh, as currently, and that's because fee tree is such a big change that we want to keep new additions as minimized as possible and just stick to battle tested contracts aside from the vaults themselves. That's how I understand I think it. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's all, of course, like a pain in the ass not to have it. Um, but it's also going to become less of a problem as we move forward. Uh, you know, missions aren't always going to be at 400% or, or, or whatever. So you're not going to have that um, be compelled to, to compound every single day. Uh, and as well, we probably won't see those spikes to the gas prices we were seeing back in like May time, for example. So uh, I don't think um, it's going to be too much of a, of a hindrance to... Um, to compound yourself every now and then rather than you know wanting to do it every single day it's probably more going to be like every week or two or maybe even once a month depending on, on how big your stack is so yeah it's, it's a pain for sure um, but we're trying to do it just to avoid making a huge change to an already audited battle tested curve contract uh, rather than playing around with it and potentially making a mistake yeah yeah exactly and um yeah, I mean, gas costs have been have been going down slowly over time in the last few weeks, and as layer two solutions are starting to gain traction, then it'll probably go down further. So it won't even be that expensive to compound. Oh, and then uh, tr um, Timmy Toes uh, asked, uh, yeah, he wanted to just mention the the forum post that I did, and he says, uh, can I give a little summary of the issue? I think uh, I think we did that in the discussion. So if you have any uh, if more questions, then feel free to ask. Uh, here or in the idea sub channel on Discord, of course. And Roberto asks, will the era two staking emissions for Yaxis uh, st for Yaxis staking be delayed as well? Uh, answer is no. 
no, uh, there will be there'll be, there'll be emissions, but not uh, promised 600k emissions because that's that's not it's going into the gauges and we don't have the gauges yet on July 17. But instead, we'll do a stopgap emissions uh, continuation for a couple of weeks, and then once the gauges launch, uh, we'll go into the actual emission schedule here. And then uh, Wheat W Time asks, do you have any idea about when or how much Cosimo X will be investing? Okay, I'll I'll try to answer that. Um, so. First of all, in DeFi and crypto, it's common practice not to publicize amounts, not to publish information about the exact amounts that they're investing. And in this case as well, where uh, the amount that Cozy Max invested is being kept confidential. Uh, most of the info we can share is actually in the Medium article, but to summarize them and just to refresh the minds a little bit, uh, Cozy Max aims to be in the soon to be launched partner program that will roll out with the next website refresh that's, uh, that's upcoming. Shout out Mr. Mister for working on that. And they will be introducing their clients to Y axis, and they're also uh, going to own tokens. Uh, and if you uh, refer back to you heard week nine or the week X of week nine, uh, there's also a mention there about the role of Cosimo X in bringing in institutional capital, sticky capital that, that, that will stay in the vaults for a longer period of time. If you have anything else to add, Bobby, uh, feel free. Yeah, so the guys at Cosmo X are, are really good guys. Um, I've met with them a few times. Um, yeah, so they're, they're very well entrenched in traditional finance and they really want to support DeFi. They definitely share our vision uh, of DeFi being the future. Um, and that's coming from a, a traditional background that they have. Um, so they definitely want to support it as much as they can. Uh, they're the kind of guys that went to the Miami conference, for example. Uh, they're very much keen on promoting the space and supporting it. Um, we're fortunate to be one of the um, platforms that they want to kind of support and they see potential in. Um, so they're... I think I mentioned before in that uh, previous episode that essentially on the other side of the desk to us, we're looking for institutional capital and they have access to that institutional capital and they're looking for the best places to kind of deposit that uh, and to, um, you know, to promote to their clients themselves. So, yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an essentially like a multifaceted agreement. It's not just about uh, investment. It's also about this partner program, which will be launching shortly. Um, to onboard that capital, so it's really like a, a long-term vision. It's just at the beginning of its um, of its nature right now. So hopefully, we're going to be working with them uh, for for a long time to come. And especially as we roll out the V3 vaults, uh, the canonical vaults, um, is something that um, we can start to to pull those levers, I guess, for for that. Yeah, and if you look at their portfolio, I think uh, they made some other great picks as well. So we're in good hands. Uh, as for the final question uh, that was asked in advance, Morpheus Crypto asks, um, what will the APYs be for the canonical vaults and what can the community do to assist with the launch? Um, as for the APYs, those are variable because they depend on the emissions, which we are discussing on the forum right now. We haven't made a decision yet uh, on the team side. Depends on the price of y for the access token, depends on the price of the tokens that we're farming, and depends on the yield of strategies that, were, uh, that, that we have deployed, which also depend on the greater market because more volume means more APY usually. So can't really give you an answer on, on that. We'll just have to see. Uh, make sure to chip in on the forum discussion, of course. Uh, as for what the community can do to help uh, help launch the, the vaults, well, I think we discussed it a little bit in the intro in the discussion, but uh, let us know if you have any further questions. And then um, yeah, we can go on to the live questions. Let's see if there's anything there. Uh, Matt Patel asks, uh, what are the criteria to receive the airdrop in August? Uh, yeah, so you have to have that. You have to have staked tokens since April, and you can't have sold or transferred out tokens. There's a Medium article about it, which uh, Echo Patient linked, where you can see the full details. So make sure to check that out if uh, if you want to know exactly how to be uh, eligible. If you guys have any further questions, okay, Bobby, go ahead. Yeah, I think it was the it was the 15th of May was the cutoff rather than April. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. I keep saying April. It's 15th of May, and it's until 17th of July. So just in a short while longer. I'll give you guys a few uh, few more seconds to get the questions in. Not all at once, please. All right, it seems we don't have any further questions. Of course, if you do have questions, there's no rush. Feel free to drop them later on in the channel or in the Champions All channel, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. But for now, I uh, hope you guys have a great evening, and uh, hope you guys also Enjoy football this weekend if you're interested in that. Thanks for tuning in again.
Thanks, guys. Have a good weekend. Thanks, everyone. See you. Thanks, everyone.